In this video we're going to look at how we can use vector methods to find the closest approach between two moving objects. So let's start with a two-dimensional example. So we've got two particles A and B are moving in the XY plane. The initial position vector of A is 3J and A moves with constant velocity i plus j. The initial position vector of b is 4i plus 10j and b moves with constant velocity 4i minus 3j. And the first thing we've got to do is write down the position vectors of a and b at time t. Now if the velocity of a is constant then the displacement of a during a time t is simply going to be t times the velocity. So we've got displacement equals velocity times time provided the velocity is constant. So in this case in time t the particle a is going to have moved by t times by 1 1 from its initial position. Now, the position vector of A at time t will be the initial position vector of A plus the displacement. So in this case, that is going to be 0,3 plus t times 1, 1. 0,3 is the initial position vector of A and the displacement during time t is t times 1, 1. And this can be written as the single vector t3 plus t. Now, entirely similar argument will tell us that the position vector of b at time t is the initial position vector of b, which is the vector 410, plus the displacement during time t, which is t times the velocity vector, which is t times the vector 4 minus 3. So we've got the position vector of b at time t is going to be 410 plus t times 4 minus 3 which simplifies to the single vector 4 plus 4t 10 minus 3t. So the position vector of A at time t is given by the vector t3 plus t and the position vector of B at time t is given by the vector 4 plus 4t 10 minus 3t. Now we can use GeoGebra to try and plot and see what's happening to these two particles A and B. So here's our first plot. We've got when t equals naught We've got A is at the point 0, 3 and B is the, at the point 4, 10. And the little GeoGebra app that we've got here calculates the distance between A and B using Pythagoras' theorem. So in this case here we've got the distance between A and B is slightly over 8 units. Now if we move on a little bit to t equals 0 0.1, then A and B are slightly closer together. We've got a distance between A and B of approximately 7.9. Moving on to t equals 0 0.2, we've got the distance between A and B is approximately 7.7. .7. So at the moment we can see that A and B are getting closer to each other. Moving to t equals 0 0.3, we've got the distance AB has come down to about 7.6. Moving to t equals 0.4, AB is now down at somewhere around about 7.5. Moving to t equals 0.5, we've now got the distance AB is 7.43 approximately. Moving to t equals 0.6, we've got AB is down to 7.4. Moving to t equals 0 0.7, it looks as if now the distance AB is beginning to increase. 
So it looks as if now we're increasing the distance between the particles A and B. If we move on to t equals 0 0.8, they're getting a little bit further apart again. t equals 0 0.9, getting a bit further apart again. So, from what we've already done, we can see that the minimum distance between A and B appears to be approximately 7.4, and that this occurs when t is somewhere in the region of 0 0.6 seconds. Now it's reasonable at this stage to say how can we find the closest approach of A and B algebraically. So, we know that the position vector of A at any stage is the vector t, 3 plus t. And we know that the position vector of B at any stage is the vector 4 plus 4t, 10 minus 3t. Now what we're going to do at this stage is we're going to try and show that AB squared, that's the distance between AB squared, is equal to 25t squared minus 32t plus 65. Now if we want to move from A, which is the point T, 3 plus T, to the point B, which is 4 plus 4T, 10 minus 3t, then the movement from A to B is first of all a movement in the x direction of the x coordinate of B, take away the x coordinate of A. In other words, 4 plus 4t, take away t. And the y movement from A to B is going to be the y coordinate of B, take away the y coordinate of a. In other words, 10 minus 3t take away 3 plus t, which simplifies to 4 plus 3t as the x movement and 7 minus 4t as the y movement. Using Pythagoras' theorem, we can say that the length of AB squared is 4 plus 3t squared plus 7 minus 4t squared. We can multiply that out. 4 plus 3t squared is 16 plus 24t plus 9t squared. 7 minus 4t all squared is 49 minus 56t plus 16t squared. And tidying that up, we get AB squared is 65 minus 32T plus 25T squared. And then to answer part C, to find the time when the two particles are closest together and find the distance between the two particles at this time. Well, if we're trying to find where AB is, is as small as possible, that will be at exactly the same time as when AB squared is as small as possible. So we'll start off by trying to find out when AB squared is as small as possible. In other words, we want to find the minimum of 65 minus 32t plus 25t squared. Now we can either do that by completing the square on 65 minus 32t plus 25t squared, or we could do it by differentiation process and find the stationary point of 65 minus 32t plus 25t squared. I'm going to do it by completing the square. So we know that AB squared is 65 minus 32t plus 25t squared. Let's factor out the 25 first of all. So that's 25 times by t squared minus 1.28t plus 2.6. And now completing the square on t squared minus 1.28t, we get t minus 0.64 all squared take away 0.64 squared. And we've then still got the 2.6 inside the brackets and the 25 outside the brackets. 
And if we just evaluate 2.6, take away 0.64 squared, we end up with 25 lots of t minus 0.64 squared plus 2.1904. And from this, we can see that the minimum value of ab squared will occur when t equals 0.64 and that the minimum value is 25 times by 2.1904, in other words, 54.76. So that means that the minimum value of AB occurs when T equals 0.64, and that minimum value is the square root of 54.76, or 7.4 exactly. Now what we've just done here on a two-dimensional example can equally well be done on a three-dimensional example. So if we've got two particles A and B moving in three-dimensional space with A starting at the point minus 2, 3, 0 and moving with constant velocity minus 8i plus 3j plus 2k and B starts at the point 11 minus 8, 5 and moves with constant velocity minus 10i plus 9j minus k. Then we can write down expressions for the displacement of a from the origin at time t and for the displacement of b from the origin at time t. So the displacement of a from the origin at time t is going to be the initial position vector of a plus the displacement of a at time t from its initial position. The initial position vector is minus 2, 3, 0. And then the displacement of a from its initial position at time t is simply going to be t times by the velocity vector. So that is going to be t times the vector minus 8, 3, 2. And we can simplify that to the single vector minus 2 minus 8t, 3 plus 3t, 2t. Similarly, we can say that rb, the e, displacement of b from the origin at time t is equal to the initial position vector of b plus the displacement of b at time t from its initial position. The initial position of b is the vector 11 minus 8, 5 and the displacement of b at time t from its initial position is going to just be t times by the velocity of b, which is minus 10, 9, minus 1. So we've got rb is the vector 11 minus 8, 5, plus t times minus 10, 9, minus 1, which can be written as a single vector of 11 minus 10t, minus 8 plus 9t, 5 minus t. So, We've got the expressions for RA and RB. We now want to get our expression for the distance between A and B. Well, in fact, we're going to try and get the, the expression for the distance squared between A and B. We know that at time t, A is the point minus 2 minus 8t, 3 plus 3t, 2t, and B is at the point 11 minus 10t, minus 8 plus 9t, 5 minus t. So the vector joining a to b is going to first of all be the x coordinate of b take away the x coordinate of a. So that's 11 minus 10t take away minus 2 minus 8t. Then we've got the y coordinate of b take away the y coordinate of a. So that's minus 8 plus 9t, take away 3 plus 3t. 
And finally, we've got the z-coordinate of b. Take away the z-coordinate of a. So that is 5 minus t. Take away 2t. Now we need to simplify these expressions. So the x move going from a to b is going to be 13 minus 2t. The y move as we go from a to b is going to be minus 11 plus 6t. And the z move as we go from a to b is going to be 5 minus 3t. So the magnitude of the vector AB is D, where D squared is 13 minus 2T squared plus minus 11 plus 6T all squared plus 5 minus 3T all squared. So we've got some expansions to do here. The first one is going to give me 169 minus 52t plus 4t squared. The second square we've got to expand is going to give me 121 minus 132t plus 36t squared. And the third bracket we've got to expand it's going to give me 25 minus 30t plus 9t squared. If we tidy all that lot up, we obtain 49t squared minus 214t plus 315. So alpha is 49, beta is minus 214 and gamma is 315. So we've now got to find the distance between A and B when T equals 2. Well, that's easy. All we need to do is substitute T equals 2 into our expression. So when T equals 2, we've got AB squared is equal to 49 times 2 squared, take away 214 times 2, plus 315, which gives me 83, which means that the distance between A and B is the square root of 83. To find the minimum distance between A and B and the time when it occurs, we're going to need to either do some differentiation of 49t squared minus 214t plus 315, to find its stationary point, or we can use the method of completing the square again. Now to find the minimum distance between A and B and the time when it occurs, we need to find the minimum value of 49t squared minus 214t plus 315. That is, we're finding the minimum value of the distance squared. And we can do that either by completing the square or by finding the stationary point of 49t squared minus 214t plus 315. So if we go through completing the square again, we have AB squared is 49 lots of t squared minus 214 divided by 49t plus 315 over 49. Completing the square, on t squared minus 214 over 49t gives me t minus 107 over 49 all squared. Take away 107 over 49 squared. We still got to add 315 over 49 and all of that lot's got to be multiplied up by the 49. If we now multiply through by the 49 we're going to get 49 times the t minus 107 over 49 all squared. Then we're going to get 40, take away 49 times 107 squared divided by 49 squared, which is just going to leave me with 107 squared over 49. And then finally we're going to get add 315. 
and that simplifies to 49 lots of t minus 107 over 49 all squared add 3986 divided by 49 which tells me that the minimum value of AB squared occurs when T equals 107 over 49 and that the minimum value of AB squared is 3986 divided by 49 so the minimum value of AB will be the square root of 3986 over 49 in other words one seventh of the square root of 3986. So the minimum value of AB then is one seventh of the square root of 3986 and this occurs when T equals 107 over 49. And this concludes our work on closest approach problems.